When you think about luxury, luxury branding across the world, the name Sotheby's immediately comes to mind between the auction house, the cars, all the fine things they do in there, as you may well be aware, very, very involved in luxury real estate. From Sotheby's, we have with us today, Elizabeth Dojero. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Happy to have you. Thank you. What I'm is it that attracted you to the Sotheby's brand? Um, I would have to say just their global reach. So the Sotheby's brand um, introduced the luxury real estate market in 1976. And they are just one of the most phenomenal companies, you know, whether it's the global reach, we have 990 offices around the world. So, um, you know, we have connections. If somebody is relocating from Hong Kong, they can actually view properties in Jacksonville if they're wanting to relocate or Miami or, you know, so we really have, you know, an unprecedented, you know, reach and internet connection like no one else. So that to me, and then also representing the luxury. I mean, Sotheby's, when you ha hang that blue sign in front of a yard, they know what that means. You know. Excellent. So when we define luxury in the in, in Northeast Florida, uh, typically it's in that one to ten million dollar range, occasionally into the teens. That's a relatively small amount of, of buyers. How, when you're marketing a luxury mark, uh, luxury property, how are you reaching beyond our neighborhoods to bring those people in? Um, we have, I mean. Most people will search online when they're first searching. And we have the number one on every aspect, YouTube channels, number one. So when people are searching, you know, for properties, it actually starts on the internet and we're untouchable when it comes to internet. So that's really how we draw, you know, that outside reach, you know, that's, um, you know, relocation and whatnot. We also work with different relocation companies as well. So, you know, if there's doctors or, uh, you know, other business uh, um, people that are, you know, relocating, um, you know, they, they typically will use those companies, which we also have, you know, the affiliation. Excellent. What, if I'm a real estate agent and I'm, uh I have a luxury buyer. What, what is it going, how is it going to be different when I deal with a Sotheby's agent as compared to someone who doesn't specialize in luxury? I like to call it, we offer a professional elegance and a white glove service. So when you walk into, you know, say a Rolex company, you know, you want to buy your first Rolex, you are offered you know, that service, nobody else really, we're, we're held, in order to even be a Sotheby's agent, we're held to a specific standard. We don't just go out and say, um, hey, you wanna come and work for our company? You actually have to meet a specific standard. And if you don't, you don't show class, you don't show professionalism, and really put, you know, yourself in a customer service, you know, ori oriented, you know, white glove, you can't work there. So you really have to, um, you really have to, you know, provide that white glove service to, you know, your clientele. Right. Knowing that you, uh, you've been here in the luxury market for quite some time, what other luxury markets have you worked in around the country? Um, I've worked in Portland, Oregon and Miami. So I would have to say Miami probably tops everything just because you know, the most expensive home, you know, goes for around 60 million, you know, so your average sell in Miami would be, you know, like 850 cash, you know, no, pretty much everybody pays cash down there. If we were to get, you know, uh, somebody that was doing a mortgage, we're like, oh, we have to wait 60 days, you know, for you to close. So, um, so that, that is definitely something that is, uh, it was great to experience that market because it does correlate with the Jacksonville market as well. You know, a lot of people are relocating from Miami up to Jacksonville uh, with our price point being a little bit lower. Yeah. It's a great investment, you know, for them. Easy so. transition. Mm -hmm. Portland's booming. I was in Portland last mm -hmm. spring and things that were 
were a hundred thousand ten years ago are now well over a million dollars. It's incredible. Yeah, and something about the Portland market, you know, as well. It's so hot that when you put a home on the market, you typically will get multiple offers. And then on top of it, not only do you have to, you know, go above listing price with your offer, you also need to submit a letter to the owner pleading that they accept your trying to reach them <laughs> on a personal level. And it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. So, and I um, have contacts, you know, in almost every state. So even if I were to have a friend that um, we're looking to relocate to say, you know, Portland, Oregon, California, you know, somewhere like that, I have contacts that I can hook them up with, you know, professional agents all over the the United States. So that is another really nice thing is we have a really great network. Thank you. I enjoyed yeah. that. Well, when you're thinking about luxury, whether it's the buy side or sell side, a conversation with Elizabeth is certainly one worth having.